Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're talking about some practical applications for AC frequency settings when welding aluminum on an inverter where the AC frequency is adjustable. I'm using an HTP Invertig 221H today. And to start with, I'm going to repeat something I did in a previous video, and that is welding really thick aluminum like this because that's the first example or application where you need to adjust frequency to get the most out of the machine. You'll actually get more out of an inverter like this setting the frequency down to 50 Hertz or so rather than setting it up high to pinpoint the heat. That along with a preheat and sometimes even the addition of helium will will be what's needed to get the most out of a, a machine like this. Without having a really big power source you need, you need to know some tricks to weld one inch thick aluminum. Now you can hear a big difference in the sound here a really low rattle and that's typical of lower frequencies but that lower frequency is what's necessary to, to, to make that stuff melt. I didn't preheat this at all just to kind of see what it would do and it did the job. I would definitely recommend preheating for one inch thick aluminum. You see a, a little tiny pore just opened up there right behind me and that's pretty typical when you fire up on cold aluminum that's this thick because that puddle freezes so quickly from the quench factor of all that surrounding mass but it did the job and took care of that job now for other beads like build-up beads like this maybe 60 Hertz is a good setting you don't need that 50 rattle and you need a little bit of uh, basically 60 Hertz is about the same as you're accustomed to welding if you use the transformer machine before so it's a good setting it's tried and true and for doing build-up like this on aluminum which is done a lot on aluminum castings and things 60 Hertz is kinda hard to beat now we're going to shift gears into something where you might need to pinpoint the heat a little bit and that is an edge weld on some 11 gauge which is 8th inch thick which is around 3 millimeters thick. You need a little bit of finesse, a little bit of arc control on that thing and so I'm going to set here the frequency up to 100 hertz that will pinpoint and focus the arc just a little bit more or quite a bit more actually than 60 hertz will. And so that pinpointing the arc is helpful on an edge weld, but I'm setting the AC balance down here actually to 60, which is a little bit lower than, than what most people would use, but I want it to wet out. I want a nice clean puddle. I'm not worried about penetrating deep here and, and setting that AC balance up way high and getting more electrode negative in there. That's ca actually kind of counterproductive on a, a buildup like this because you want a nice clean puddle that just wets nicely. You want it to wet out and move at minimal heat. You don't want pepper in the puddle or contamination. And sometimes the edge weld kind of uh, splits that argon with the Venturi effect and gets contaminated. So you want enough cleaning to take care of that. Now we're going to switch gears to a thinner edge weld, which is 1 16th, which is 1.6 millimeter. And that arc is not very stable right there. But the reason is is because I didn't I didn't swap uh, I didn't go down electrode sizes. I'm still using. 332nd uh, 2.4 millimeter electrode and it's too big so I'm gonna swap down here I'm gonna go down in size on electrode it's definitely worth the trouble when you're doing something like this just take a minute and swap out so I'm gonna swap to the smaller electrode and you'll notice here what I'm using is is called a stubby gas lens from CK Worldwide and that lets you uh, basically use a small gas lens cup like the number seven you see there on the table with a large number 17 air-cooled torch like this and to me it makes that 17 torch a lot more manageable a lot more useful in tight spots and unless I need the full amperage carrying capability of that 17 I'm fine with dropping down with, with the stubby here I use it a lot and I like to use gas lens uh, collet bodies a lot also so I'm swapping down to that 1 16th electrode size here and that should do better the electrode in there sharpened up nice to a point and we'll see what kind of arc control and arc stability we have with this uh, with this HTP machine and you can see I lit up on it without even without even nipping it and that arc is much more stable than it was with the 332nd electrode that's a stable arc so that's what you need to do you don't you know one size does not fit all when it comes to welding sure there is ranges going back now here I'm showing you again the uh, that arc just fluttering around because that electrode is not in its uh, optimum amperage range. Now going down to the 1 16th electrode, things are much better. So, what's next? Well, how about a T-joint in 1 16th metal? That's 1.6 millimeter. That's kind of tough to get the puddle 
to neck down and go into the corner and keep a small size weld on aluminum. That's kind of tough doing that on a T-joint. So that's where setting the frequency higher can really help. I'm set it up to 150 hertz here and I'm using the tapered electrode and not not adding filler but that's really just for the purposes of making it just a little bit easier to film here but you can see how it wets down all the way into the corner as opposed to using too big an electrode here as well as low hertz low low frequency at 60 this is set at 60 hertz arc is wandering all over the place and by the time I get it hot enough to go down into the corner it, it's just kind of it's just kind of a mess it's an unstable arc. It's going to be really hard to get a small weld. Again, compare that to using the right size electrode and higher frequency, and things are going a whole lot nicer here. So that's the benefit of being able to set the frequency higher on it using a like this HTP inverter. Now to recap here, just a little summary to go over everything again. Start off using one inch thick metal here. We started off at 50 hertz because that gets more heat input into the part. Maybe not pinpoint the heat as much, but you don't always need that. Sometimes your main interest is just getting all you can out of the machine because you've got a really thick part. And then maybe bump it up to 60 hertz for doing build-up work like on aluminum castings and everything where you want the bead to wet out nice. And when you need to pinpoint it a little bit, for instance, like on an edge weld that's an eighth inch thick, you want to use a tapered electrode and have a nice low start, about 100 hertz. And for going a little bit thinner, and wanting to pinpoint the heat a little bit more, 120 hertz, and also helps to drop in, in electrode size when you get down something that thin. Drop down one size to 1 16th, 1 1.6 millimeter. And then going all the way up to 150 hertz for something like a T-joint or an area that's hard to punch the, uh, the bead down into a tight spot. And you can go even higher, but um, there is a, a point of diminishing return when you get on up over about 200, I think, anyway. So you can learn more about HTP welders by going to that link or calling that number and thanks for watching.